Sugar Bowl was a home game for DJ Shockley in Georgia. But it was the Mountaineers who acted like the Dome was their home. First West Virginia possession after Georgia went three and out. Steve Slayton, who played out of his mind. 52 yards late, fourth on the depth chart when the season began. 98 seconds, the drive, 7-0 Mountaineers after another Georgia punt, another WBU score. It's 14-0, Danny Ware fumbles. D. McCann recovers. Georgia lost three fumbles in this ball game. Ensuing West Virginia possession, trick daddy. Darius Raynaud gets the great block, scores his second six. It's 21 zip. The couches are sweating. No sugar tonight in Georgia's coffee. No sugar tonight in their tea. Second quarter, 28 7. 90 yards, six play drive ends when Thomas Brown bounces off the wall, goes outside. He goes 52 yards, 28 14. Georgia trail by 10 at the half. Maybe the guess who queued up early. Third quarter, guess who? Georgia. Shockley to A.J. Bryant. 31-28, and the couch is back in Morgantown, and now nervous that they may not get burned. Fourth quarter, 31-28. West Virginia, third and 10. Pat White, one tough dude at quarterback, 13 yards and the first down. But El Dudarino goes to Slate. Georgia gave up an average of 124 rushing yards per game this season. Slate went for a Sugar Bowl record 204 by himself. Mm. Old record 202. Tony Dorr set 1997 national championship clinching game against Georgia. But Shockley hasn't given up that early. He's got Ugg on the sidelines. 20-33, 277 yards. Brian McClendon right there. And we've got a ball game, 38-35. Buck 45 left. West Virginia fourth down. Putting at midfield. Are you kidding me? You have to have no fear to do that. Coach Rod calling it. Bill Brady getting it done. Bartender, let's go Mountaineers. Let's go drink some beers. Lynn Swan with Coach Rodriguez. This team in your program has come a long way. Congratulations. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. These kids are really have come together as the season went along. I'm so proud of them. You know, we held the road. This was a tough uh, battle for us all four quarters, but our guys got a lot of heart. What is, was there any one thing that made the difference in this ball club? I know you talked I think about in speed all three maturity. Phases, the guys kept believing. I think we talked about that before the game. Just keep believing, playing hard, keep slugging, see what happens. Well, you told me at halftime it was going to be a fight and you had to answer the bell. You said there were 100 slugs. That yeah, you but it, was, it was probably 200 slugs. We've been out here a long time, but sure it feels sweet. Coach, it's a little history for your program. Congratulations. Enjoy it. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Oh, yeah, West Virginia belongs. For the third time in school history, West Virginia puts together an 11-win season. Now in 88 and 93, Mountaineers took undefeated teams into their bowl games and lost them both. The only other team in school history to win at least 10 games, the 69 squad won the Peach Bowl. Oh, sugar on peaches. Fantasty. Charlie White's trying to stat, snap the Irish's seven-game bowl losing streak. Jim Tressel and his boys back on the field where they won the national title in 2003. That's Laura Quinn, sister of uh, Brady, and uh, she's dating A.J. Hawk. You might have heard something about that. She's got a lot of air time. Yes, she did. This is Darius Walker. That's A.J. Hawk getting shoved. And we're two minutes into the ball game, and Notre Dame is already on the board 7-0. First quarter, same score. Troy Smith, who had a huge game hooking up with the electrifying Teddy Ginn. He is so fast, you can't believe it. He had 240 yards of total offense. We're not up at seven. Ensuing drive, Charlie Weiss goes for it on fourth down. Bad idea. The Lombardi Award winner, Hawk, takes down Quinn. Rough day for him. He was sacked five times. Second quarter, first and 10, Ohio State from Rome, 32. Reverse to Teddy Ginn. It's Antonio Holmes with a huge block. And Ginn's like Mr. Pippin Red Vines. He equals crazy delicious. But he actually got caught, sort of, from behind. But then he zips and zags, and he's still going to score. Seven might be the next five. I don't want to get blasphemous, but number seven could be the next Bush. Late second, same score. Troy Smith, a career day. We'll get to that in a minute. It's Antonio Holmes. He threw the block. He caught the pass. And Buckeye fans get a good look at the youngster from Belgrade, Belgrade Florida. Going to be his last game in scarlet and gray. He's going to the league. 21-7, Buckeyes, third quarter, third and two. Notre Dame gives it to Walker. He takes it to the paint again. Missed the extra point, 21-13. He had all three Notre Dame touchdowns did Walker. This was not controversial, but initially it wasn't ruled a touchdown. It looked like he was stopped short. They take a look. The ball right there crosses the plane. So Notre Dame is now down just seven. But Smith was so good at quarterback. Made a huge play to escape from a sack to convert a first down pass, and then this would make Wayne Woodrow Hayes smile. Handed off to Pittman. Not three yards in a cloud of dust. 
60 yards and a touchdown. Ohio State got 136 on the ground from Pittman, and Ohio State wins this clash of the Titans, and there's a little bath of Gatorade for the coach. Dirty little secret for Notre Dame, they won nine games this year. Only two of them came against teams that had winning records. As for Smith, 19 to 28, career high 342. More on him in just a minute, but how about 617 yards of offense out of Ohio State? Notre Dame was the team that came in supposedly with the better offense. Ohio State now 4-0 in four BCS games. One, one thing we talked about is we wanted to make sure we didn't overthrow the deep ones because we knew they'd be open. Uh, but what some teams had done had been overthrown them or, or misthrown them, and, and uh, we were so proud of the way the kids executed. And, and then, of course, the reverse, you know, was Notre Dame's a fast defense, and when they're chasing one way and Teddy's running the other way, they got a problem. They definitely were the better team today and deserved winner. And um, I just, there's no reason to sit there and uh, make any second guesses or co complaining because you know, they, they definitely were the better team. With a loss Monday, Notre Dame has now lost eight straight bowl games. That ties an all-time NCAA record with West Virginia, who's certainly smiling this day, and South Carolina. The Irish have lost the games by an average of just over 16 points. Notre Dame's last bowl win came in 1994 when it beat A&M. They're now under 500 in bowls all time. The game day final crew with their thoughts. Ball game. Alabama with just one bowl win, and it's... Last eight years, tied quarterback Brody Croyle went to work early to change that. First quarter, first drive out to Keith Brown. Tackle Chris Caps gave him the big block and 76 yards, sixth longest touchdown reception and a 323, seventh quickest scoring drive in Cotton Bowl history. But take another look. Was this a touchdown? Brown has possession. Where's his left knee? If it's down, he's down. This play was not reviewed. Tied second longest play of the season, 7 0 Bama. Second and third quarter field goals exchange. Fourth quarter, 10 3. Cody Hodges, uncomfortable. And even more so after this play, comes up limping. Hodges takes a good lick from Roman Harper, and he does not keep on ticking. Believed to be a torn knee ligament. So he's forced out. Then he returns, said afterwards, I had three and a half minutes left of college football. I wasn't going to sit on the sidelines. Not when he can do that. Jared Hicks breaks a tackle. We are tied. Now Bama ball. Under a minute, first and 10 from the home 45. This began on their 14 with three minutes left. Croyle to Brown puts him in field goal range. Been nearly 30 years since this game was decided on the last play of the game. Jamie Christensen already missed one field goal and had another blocked. The kick on the way. It is not pretty. And it is good, though. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. It didn't look pretty, but it ends up being the most beautiful kick you've ever seen. Alabama getting another game-winning kick from Jamie Christensen. Not pretty. How about just downright ugly? Turns out beautifully for Bama fans. 13-10 winners at the AT&T Cotton Bowl. Now, the CEO of AT&T attended Texas Tech, but there's no truth to the rumor that he was behind this. Where it is now. Don't let that get on ESPN. Double-digit dog had plenty of bite. Last game for Barry Alvarez, his head coach for Wisconsin. His quarterback, John Stocko, said we just wanted to thank him for everything he's done. Brandon Williams thanked him by taking this pass 30 yards to the paint. And Bucky the Badger was up seven later in the first quarter. First and ten for Wisconsin. And this Auburn defense is tough, tough, tough. A lot of folks thought they were the best team in all of the SEC at the end of the season. Brian Calhoun does not care. 61 of his 123 yards in the first half right there led to a field goal. It was 10-0. Things got ugly here in the second quarter. Nick Hayden rips the helmet off of Auburn's Troy Reddick. Reddick throws a punch in retaliation. It's always the guy that retaliates that gets the gate. He's booted from the game. Auburn trailed 17-0 at the half. Fourth quarter, Wisconsin's up seven. Calhoun takes the pitch. Jason Posiak helps spring him right there. And then watch safety. Eric Brock gets completely turned around. Wisconsin had 548 total yards. They dominate this game. Alvarez gets his fourth 10-win season in a Gatorade shower. He goes out in style. Gator country, Jacksonville, Toyota Gator Bowl, Virginia Tech, and Louisville. Cardinals up 7-3 on a Hunter Caldwell touchdown pass. And Hunter, now the hunted. Freshman walk-on quarterback gets banged. 
Caldwell making his second start after Brian Brom was lost to an injury. Coach Petrino said afterwards, Cantwell may have broken his nose on the play. He got hit probably harder than he's ever been hit, was the coach's estimation. And Nolan Burchett would agree, although he got 15 yards for celebrating the pain. Cantwell has had better drives, needs a breather, but the, the, the nose may be broken thing. Well, sits out of play, but two plays back. Cantwell is one tough dude, hits Joshua Tinch, 39 yards, and Cardinals up 14-3. That's my boy, is what Hunter's mama friend is thinking. That, and they better not hurt my boy. There was a Mike Vick sighting, unlike Sunday in Atlanta. Then again, it's, it's not just him. Supporting younger brother Marcus, who after this play does something that, quite frankly, is unsupportable. Vick gets up, he steps on the back of Elmer Domerville's leg, and that is uncool. Vic said it was an accident. Coach Beamer said he sent Vic to the Louisville locker room after the game to apologize to Doomerville, who never showed to either accept or decline the I'm sorry fourth quarter. Well, Cantwell on third down, sorry, he threw that ball. Picked by James Anderson. He's a graduate student, and class is over. His mom's name is Brenda also. Hunter's mom's seen enough. Son threw three picks and three touchdowns. Frank Beamer, take a beverage bath. 35-24, Virginia Tech. Second time in three years, it's Iowa and Florida in the Outback Bowl. Kirk France and the Hawkeyes trying to avoid a five-loss season, and this was a season that started with so much promise for the Hawkeyes. Florida scored three different ways in this ball game: offense, defense, and right here, special teams. Jamal Cornelius with a block. Tremaine McCollum recovers. It's great to be a Florida Gator. They're up 7-0. In complete control, Chris Leak. Long to Dallas Baker at a season-high 10 catches. He's all by his own self. Florida crushing Iowa 31-7. Fourth quarter, though, Iowa on the comeback trail. Drew Tate looking for Ed Hinkle. Good-looking wide out. He had a season-high nine catches. Iowa's down 10. Late in the fourth quarter after a field goal, Iowa's within seven. The perfect onside kick. Hawkeyes have got the ball. Down seven. Chance to tie and take another look. Listen, referees... God love them. They do their best. They try their hardest. But this is a horrendous call because Iowa would have had the ball with a chance to tie. They call offsides. It wasn't offsides. Iowa kicks again. Florida recovers. And they go. They win four of their last five. Got a great recruiting class in the fold. Things looking good for Florida.